Okay, so we're back with another uh, book review. I'm going to continue with the pile of books that are on the floor beside my bed uh, before, you know, continuing on to the shelf that we previewed last time. And uh, probably, like I, like I hinted at last time, <laughs> that there are other books. I do have other interests, but uh, we're going to be continuing on the Langlands train, I think, for the most part. Um, with this episode. So I guess uh, without further ado, um, we'll we'll dive right in here uh, to what I've got. So, well, I guess actually, okay, this is right on top. Um, I mean, do, do I really need to talk about this book? It's, it's probably one of the most famous books in mathematics for being a standard reference for algebraic geometry and for being a uh, terse as well um so this is here because i was i was looking at it for my sheaf series oh there's something very interesting to uh <laughs> so let me tell you this um extremely extremely embarrassing story um i went to the western algebraic geometry symposium as an undergrad i don't remember what year this was in and ravi vakil was there and as far as I'm aware, he doesn't have any uh, physically printed books, right? He's got The Rising Sea, which is great. Um, and I had a copy of Hart Shern, and I wanted <laughs> to get his autograph, because, you know, whatever, Ravi Vakil's a famous uh, mathematician. And I went up to him and asked him uh, if he would sign my copy of Hart Shern. And he was extremely confused, and he's like, yeah, but I'm not heart sure. And I was like, I know, I know, I know, but this is the book I've got. <laughs> and so he writes, he writes uh, uh, inside my book, um, I'm not sure what to write, not heart sure, Ravi Vakil. So um, I guess that makes this particular copy uh, kind of interesting and funny. Um, what to say about this? I mean, look, if you're going to do algebraic geometry, you, you should have this book on your shelf. Uh, but, but by no means is this the place to learn algebraic geometry from as a first pass, right? Like, like, I think this book was written originally because we needed, like, a version uh, of, of EGA or SGA, whatever, like, like not long after some of these more abstract viewpoints were being worked out. And ob obviously, since then, we've gone through um, a lot of, like, pedagogical developments, right? There's been a lot of other books and perspectives, um, and there's a lot of clarity gained by hindsight. So, uh, I mean, I... At the same time, I really do like, like, if, if you are ready for Schemes and Sheaves, you know, Chapter 2 is, um, decent, you know? There's, like, like, there's a lot of good, uh, reference here, right? There's a lot of good reference material. Um, but I don't think, for example, that I've ever seriously studied this book as, as a learning tool. Um, it's, it's been as a reference manual. Okay, I've rambled enough about that. Um, probably too long for how, how famous that book is. Uh, what else do we have here? We have, ooh, Automorphic Forms by Anton Dietmar. This is actually probably one of my favorite books I have on here. Uh, it's, it's awesome. So, um, it's great because not only a great place, like, okay, you could start learning about automorphic forms from it, sure, but even, like, if you wanted a, a quick introduction to harmonic analysis on piatic numbers, this is a great book for that. Like, there's a specific chapter there. So, like, you don't need to read Chapter 2 on Modular Forms for SL2Z uh, to jump over to the chapter on, on piatic numbers. Like, I think... The chapter on piatic numbers is a really great um, introduction uh, to the subject, and then if you want, it's it's like couched in this um, book where where you can go on to see other applications. But um, you know, so so we start off with like um, sort of elementary or, or like 
I don't want to say elementary, but like historical perspectives on uh, modular forms, right? We got you know the the Weierstrass function, Eisenstein series, zeta function, stuff like that. Talk about you know classical modular forms for SL two Z, and then and then start you know getting into the representation theory of SL two R. So uh, this this probably seems very similar to Bump, but uh, this book is um, maybe less comprehensive but offers a nice bird's eye view and is pretty digestible. Um, yeah, moving on, you know, Piatic Numbers, Adele's, there, you know, this book also has a version of, of Tate's thesis um, and then talks about the, the transition uh, to, uh, you know, talking about automorphic forms in terms of, like, automorphic representations on the Adele's and and ultimately automorphic L functions. So um, this is a really great um, bird's eye view book and in many ways uh, a nice balance between being gentle in lots of places but also giving you um, a nice overview. To that end I'm actually going to reach to the bottom of one of these piles and pull up uh, a uh, similar sort of thing. Actually, I mean, this book is a lot more terse. Introduction to Langland's program, uh, written by like everybody famous. Um, it's really great book. Again, if you want, uh, because it can be very hard to understand the Langland's program and to find your way into it and to really get what it's all about, right? Like, there's so many different weird avenues you can go down that are technically Langland's. Um, so this gives you a really nice perspective of um, a lot of different things. Like, uh, uh, I guess there's some stuff missing, maybe, but um, it's 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 really nice to get a sense of things that people are doing. Right? There's there's you know uh, elementary theory of L functions, um, classical automorphic forms. Art and L functions, you know, we've, we've got stuff about, you know, again, there's another perspective on Tate's thesis. Um, you know, this, this, uh, this section right here is, is, you know, kind of about, uh, like, the modularity theorem, um, essentially. Um, again, talking about, you know, connecting this modular forms to automorphic representations, um, L functions, uh, Langlands functoriality, and even geometric Langlands. So there's, uh, oh, yeah, I mean, s spectral theory and, like, trace operators, like, there's, there's tons in this book. Um, and so, uh, it's a really good, let's say, taster of, um, uh, the sort of Langland stuff that's out there, but it's, I would, like, it's not a book that you learn from, uh, right? There's not, like, there's, there's very little in the way of proofs. There's, like, lots of references to where you can read more. This is just sort of more, hey, here's information, here's, like, things that people talk about and care about um, in the Langlands program. Okay, uh, let's move on to some more um, esoteric material here. I have two books, so again, here's here's another two that aren't technically mine, but they're um, I have them out from the library. So uh, this one is the admissible dual uh, via compact groups of GLN or admissible dual of GLN via compact open subgroups. So this is not to be confused with type theory, but this is often uh, what people refer to as uh, the theory of types. And this is developed by Bushnell and Kutzko uh, for GLN. So, uh, gosh, I don't even, I don't even know where to begin with this. Um, basically, so if, <laughs> If by some chance you saw my uh, little video on the Iwahori Heka algebra question I have, uh, which which deals with you know operators on some piadic group, um, how do I even say this? Uh, basically, representations of of piadic GLN can be described in terms of modules of certain algebras. And there's certain very 
nice descriptions and and basically this book proves that in gln you can always build these very nice descriptions that's just yeah a brief a brief overview um something else i guess i won't say a lot of, about um just because it's also very technical actually i haven't i haven't looked at this book uh a lot yet but it's this book or uh, article i guess by uh, matsumoto uh which is all in french I'm not very good at French, and of course it has this typesetting that is uh, simply painful to look at. Um, but this is really... I want to dig into this because, again, of Heka algebra questions, and there's, um, you know, Borel proved something about some equivalence of categories, but only if you have representations of certain fixed vectors, or do you have to put the word admissible and stuff, and then... Um, Anyways, there's a certain categorical equivalence that's buried in this book somewhere that um, I, I want slash need to understand. Uh, okay, um, probably going to do two more for now. Uh, so one, not strictly speaking, a math book. Um, I read most of this, but I did skip a couple that I found a tiny bit... Uh, dragged on, sections that dragged on a tiny bit, but otherwise this was an amazing book, um, an automathography by Paul Halmosh, who's, you know, very famous, um, I guess you could broadly say he works in functional analysis, but he did work in, like, logic, too, um, yeah, just, I don't know, a, a fantastic book. It was really cool. You know, he's talking about, in the, some of the earlier chapters, like, these classic theorems that you is just basic stuff that you learn in a measure theory course and he's talking about like uh these theorems as they developed in a series of papers and it's just uh so interesting to to connect back to that piece of history um and he was also um considered by many to be a very good writer and teacher so um there's some really good some really interesting passages about mathematical uh pedagogy um uh in in this book um and i highly recommend it and then also yeah just interesting stories um you hear about him and you know just casually dropping these like old famous people and uh it's just interesting uh to to sort of weave through this thread of history uh, through his perspective. And finally, the last one, I don't know why I have this on the floor. I don't remember when the last time is I looked at it. I'm going to put it back on the shelf soon, though, is the, the second. There was two Bibles in my master's thesis. So one of them was Bump, Automorphic Forms. The other one is Differential Analysis on Complex Manifolds by Raymond Wells. Uh, I think this book is severely underrated. Um, I don't hear people talking about it enough uh, when when there's conversations related to its content online. And it was just uh, fantastic for me, at least the place that I was at and the things that I needed about like holomorphic vector bundles, um, but also all sorts of other stuff. Um, in my in my master's thesis, like this was just um, a great book. And, like, definitely one um, that would be great to study in more depth and detail. So, uh, let's dive into it. Um, uh, yeah, so, just going through the, the table of contents, um, there's really nice treatments of, uh, well, various topics. Give me a second here. Uh, right, so we start off, I mean, probably not the best place to learn manifolds for the first time. Um, so I would say, like, have a course in differential geometry under your belt first. Um, but, but, you know, there's, there's, you know, all the essential definitions there of manifolds and, and vector bundles, and then a nice introduction to the theory of almost complex uh, manifolds. Uh, which is, uh, yeah, just really, really nice theory. Um, and then uh, we get into sheaf theory. So I don't know if this is the 
best place for a first pass, but it's not bad. Um, it's definitely, yeah, it's, 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 it's really nice. Um, concise, which, which sometimes comes at the, the cost of, of clarity. Um, but you know, there's, there's examples in here. It's a nice overview. Um, I, I do think this is an underrated, uh, source for sheaf theory, um, at least in the context of differential geometry. Um, which speaking of, that's the title of chapter three. Um, but here they, you know, we're specifically getting into Hermitian, uh, differential geometry. Um, so, you know, that's talking about, for example, where you have some sort of Hermitian inner product on your complex vector bundle. Um, you get a, a canonical connection out of that. And this leads to, you know, a development of, of churn V theory, um, which is very cool. Uh, and then we get into stuff. So these are parts of the book that I didn't read as much simply because it wasn't relevant to my research at the time, but it would be really nice to go back um, to this, right? We, we start getting into some elliptic operator theory, um, the structure theory of complex, or, or sorry, uh, compact complex manifolds and like Hodge decomposition, collar uh, manifolds, uh, Kodaira's uh, projective embedding theorem and absolute classic, um, and then some, some interesting material floating around uh, in the appendices as well. So um, all around classic book, highly, highly underrated, um, would recommend 10 out of 10. Check out this book if anything about like complex manifolds um, and Hermitian vector bundles, if any of that appeals to you, uh, for sure check out this book. So uh, it's already been another 15-ish minutes. I guess we'll try and keep the episodes at that length so they're digestible. We've, we've been through the books that are currently on my floor. Who knows if there'll be different ones uh, next time, but uh, we should start uh, getting to the, the bookshelf soon and uh, seeing what stuff I have there. So, yeah, take care. <laughs>